Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colt, and in this video, we're going to be walking through the portal configuration and functionality for Zoho CRM. So I'm first going to show you how to actually set it up and determine all the permissions, and then we'll actually log in as an example portal user and look around the system from their perspective. So before I jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. So that really does help us out and leave any feedback questions or video requests in the comment section below as we do try to read through each and every one of those that you leave for us. So without any further ado, let's jump right on into the walkthrough. Alrighty, so starting here in my CRM, we're going to keep it relatively simple in terms of what we're going to open up in the portal here. So we're going to do accounts, contacts, and deals. And so I've set up a demo account here. This demo account has a related deal and it has a contact connected to it. The first thing that we're going to do here is actually go on into the settings and show how to set up the portal itself. So here inside the settings, I'll just go ahead and search for portals. So we don't have any set up right now. Again, a portal is essentially a place where a customer can actually log in to the CRM from their side and interact with various data. I'm going to go ahead and set one up here. We're just going to give it, you know, kind of a default portal name. And now that has been created. So first thing it's going to ask is, do you want to invite people right now? I'm going to say no. We're going to do that later because I want to customize what they're going to see first before I actually go ahead and invite them. In here, what we're going to work with is different user types, right? So you can actually assign different types of people, different access permissions and invite them separately to that particular profile. We're going to keep it simple and we're going to go with one profile for this, but just know that up here in the top right, you can create additional types of profiles that have unique permissions based on your specific requirements. So I'll access this client portal role. And really what this breaks down to is a few different sets of permissions. So first, we're going to have to figure out which modules or tabs should show up and what types of permission we should have in each of those. And then we're also going to need to set field permissions for each one of those modules, right? Just to be able to make sure that uh, they can see only the specific subset of data that we want them to see in a particular type of record. So from this page, first place we'll go is under the portal tab configuration. And so here we're essentially setting up the modules as a whole that we want to provide access to for a particular client user. So under contacts, if we kind of go left to right, what we can determine is which layout should be used when a client user looks at a record. We can determine what types of permissions they should have. So should they be able to create additional contacts, edit contacts that they've created, um, maybe even edit contacts that have been shared to them, right? So when we're looking at this owned records, this is really referring to things that the portal user themselves created. Over here on the right, we can figure out which list view we want to give them. So either the default list view, which would be like all contacts, um, or if we want to create a particular canvas view for them. Now, moving down the list, we've got a couple other modules and the modules that show up here are going to be determined basically by things that have a lookup to that record or to the contact record in our case here. These different modules, we can determine which ones we want included. In our case, we're just going to use the deals. So we'll disable the web form submissions and the quotes. Moving across the page here, we'll give them the ability to create and edit these deal records just in case they want to let us know, hey, I've got a new opportunity and I'm going to add that to the pipeline. Again, same thing here. Pick our list view. And what is unique about these non-contacts modules is that we can choose which lookup we want to have as the primary source of giving them access to this, right? So in our case, we just have that one lookup on the deal. If you have multiple, you'll be able to choose between those. This is kind of where the multiple user types comes into play. You know, maybe you have a lookup on a deal for a customer and you also have a lookup on a deal for a lawyer. And maybe those lawyers are kind of relevant for the transaction. You could actually have two different types of logins, right? Giving them access based on different lookup fields. Down here, all at the way at the bottom, there are some modules that we can essentially define as public. 
right? So something like products, right? Maybe we want to give them access to view any products that are in our system, just based on the fact that there's nothing really private there. Maybe those products are relevant for them as they're making a purchasing decision, right? So we want to say, hey, even if a product is not directly associated to a contact, we still want to give them access to it, right? So that they can view it, interact with it, see any of the pricing that might be relevant for them in a potential purchase that they're making. Now, once we've gone through and defined each of the modules, aka tabs that we want to provide access to, we can then determine from within each of those modules which fields a particular contact should be able to view or interact with. Here, I'm going to go ahead and just select some of these, right? Now, some of them we might not want to include, contact owner, lead source, things like that, probably not necessary for them to see. Um, things related directly to their job or contact information, we normally do want to give those access just because at the end of the day, if they want to update an email address, update a phone number, right, we may want to let them do that. Now, for each of these fields, we can determine if we want them to be read only, right? So let's say, hey, we want to show you what your email is, but that's actually what's given you access to this portal. So maybe you shouldn't be able to update it whereas some of these other pieces of information might be totally fine to give them access to. I'm just going to select all of these addresses as well, just to kind of fill out the record. Then we can move to our next module. So deals, of course, being an important one here, a particular contact may want to log in and get access to something in a deal that uh, we're working on with them. So maybe we want to give them, you know, a access to amount, but make these read only. Right, you can kind of see how it's going to take a little bit of time to go through each of these sections and really specify what is going to be most relevant for you. So I'm going to grab things like this discovery information, uh, maybe some of the chosen add-ons, etc. Just kind of letting them go through and interact with this data. Now for products, everything here is going to be read-only, right? These are just a public module, so we don't have that option to call them read-only. We just know as a fact that they're going to be read-only because they are private or because they are public, pardon me. Some of this info we may not want to include, so we're just going to keep it to some of this basic information here. One thing I do highlight is that um, each of these, we can look at a preview down here in the bottom left. So if we click on preview, it'll just give us a peek into the portal, right? So I can actually come through, look at the deals, look at the products, and all the information that would be available for a particular portal user. So now we'll finish this up. We'll see kind of looking at this list again, it's been reduced versus how it used to look. Um, that's just because we've taken out some of those modules that we've determined are not going to be necessary for a portal user. One last thing I want to show on the configuration side before I jump in and actually show the portal from the user side is under these three dots, we do have the ability to manage a couple of the forms and templates involved. So if we jump into the manage portal form, this is essentially a place where a user can try to self-register for the form, right? And these are really just going to be, say, example, portal form. A place where we can add some fields and options where we're going to let them essentially identify themselves and register for that form. I will say most of the time, the way that people are going to be added to the portal is going to be via an email invite. So under this customized portal templates, these are essentially where we can go in and access any of the email templates involved in inviting a particular user or having a confirmation email go out as they are interacting with our portal. So with that, uh, next step here is I'm going to actually go ahead and send myself an invite and then we'll log into the portal from a user perspective and take a look at uh, how it looks there. So here I am on an example record here for my portal. And under the three dots in the top right here, we can go ahead and invite them to the portal using this send portal invitation button. Now there are APIs for this, so you can automate this process. Um, we're gonna do it manually here. Important note just is that if you do have multiple user types, be careful on which one you invite them as. Um, if you do the wrong one, uh, their data just isn't gonna make sense when they log in here and try to access it. So I'll send that invite out right now, and then we'll actually swap my screen over to my inbox and we can go through the full acceptance process together. All right, so here we are in inbox here. This is just the invite that went out to my record. This was just sent through an email alias, right? So that it landed in my inbox here. So I can click accept invitation, which is gonna direct me right on over to this page. This is a unique login page for that demo account. So we can go ahead and enter a password here. And then we'll click confirm 
This is now going to essentially log us right on in to the portal. It'll always ask for a couple little options to define personal settings so they can say their time zone, right? I'm an MST, so we'll set it up that way. They can determine some of their number formats and things like that, and then we'll just click update. And so from here, now we can see as that portal user, I can log in. Uh, we see that little lock icon here on the email address. But if I were to go to something like phone, I can enter that in without any issue. I can see any of the notes that have been taken inside of the account. I can also access that deals module and see my data here. So again, this is just the information that we had particularly given them access to. Um, so anything in here that was editable, they're going to be able to click through. Uh, anything that we've determined was not editable, they cannot, right? So they're not able to enter something like an amount. Lastly, if we look at this public module, right, this is just the place where they can view all of the records here, even though they're not connected directly to them. But they do not have any edit permissions in this module because it's just publicly visible, not publicly editable. So portals, they're always going to take a decent amount of work, right? You're going to have to go in, fine tune each of those little permissions one by one to make sure that they can and cannot do all of the correct things. But once you have everything set up, it is a super useful way to give people a little peek into your system and interact with some of the data that may be relevant to them. So we really do hope that this video was useful for you. If it was, be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. And we'll see you next time.